welcome back to ASEAN News, and here is the compilation for today. Thailand uses tracking dogs to detect COVID-19. Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok starts trained Labrador. Three of six trained Labrador retrievers have debuted as Thailand's coronavirus sniffer machines. They're going through hundreds of sweat samples per day as they join the fight to detect infect asymptomatic patients amid a third wave of outbreak. The sweat samples, including those from bedridden patients who are not able to travel to get swab tests, and local medical volunteers are collect and bring in for them by the Social Development and Human Security Ministry. In addition, Thailand researchers says the dogs can detect a volatile organic compound secret in the sweat of COVID-19 sufferers, even in the absence of disease symptoms. Meanwhile, authorities say Thailand detected its first domestically transmitted cases of the highly infectious COVID-19 variant first found in India. The 15 cases include 12 construction workers at their camp in northern Bangkok, where about 1,100 of the 1,667 workers there test positive for COVID-19. At least 200 injured into train collisions in Malaysia's capital. The official says more than 200 people are injured in Malaysia when two Metrolight rail trains collided in an underground tunnel close to the Petronas Twin Towers in the capital Kuala Lumpur. Meanwhile, District Police Chief Mohammad Zainal Abdullah says the incident occurs at around 8.45 p.m. when one of the trains, which was empty, after being repaired, collided head-on with another train carrying 213 passengers traveling in the opposite direction on the same track. He affirms 47 people are severely hurt and 166 others sustain minor injuries. Indian oil tanker assist in Indonesia released after court decision. An Indonesian official and Iranian state media says an Iranian flagged tanker seized by Indonesia in January over the suspected illegal transfer of oil has been released. A spokesman for the Indonesian Coast Guard says the Iranian flagged tanker, the MT Horse, is released after a court decision earlier in the week. The court ruled the vessel could leave Indonesia while the captain will be subjected to a two year probation without any fine. In addition, Iran's state broadcaster says the vessel had resumed its mission before returning home. It had been detained in Indonesian waters since January 24. Tehran, under harsh U.S. sanctions that mainly target its oil exports, has been accused of concealing the destination of its oil sales by disabling tracking systems on its tanker. Last year, it used the empty horse to deliver 2.1 million barrels of condensate to fellow United States-sanctioned Venezuela. Vet Street 80 injured monkeys after Thai police intercept smuggling plans. Thailand Wildlife Authority says the rescue over 100 long tailed macaques that were being illegally smuggled in the back of a pickup truck, but more than a dozen did not survive. The truck is intercepted at a checkpoint while on its way to a Thai province bordering Cambodia, transporting 102 macaques in the blue mesh bags, which are stashed together in various plastic baskets. According to the video footage provided by Reuters by the Department of National Parks, Wildlife and Plant Conservation, the monkeys could have been seen struggling and gasping for air when authorities found them. In addition, authorities say Thailand veterinarians set up a field hospital equipped with ultrasound scanners and breathing tubes to treat 18 of the macaques. Four were in critical condition, while 18 did not survive. Some of the monkeys are pregnant. The driver of the truck was being detained for wildlife smuggling. The man tells local media that he was hired for 3,000 baht, or $96, to drive the truck to the border and that he was not aware there were monkeys in the back of the vehicle. 
อยู่กับหมอแล้วไม่เป็นไรแล้วมาเลเซียกัปตันแอนนอนซ์สตอตล็อกดาวน์หลังจากพันธมิตรเคสสาร์ชในประเทศ The Malaysian government decreed a total blockade as the daily cases of COVID-19 have risen to more than 8,000. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister's office in a statement says, in the first phase of the lockdown, effected from June 1 to June 14, all social economic sectors will not be allowed to operate except for essential economic services. The government also says we'll work to increase the rate of vaccination and announce an aid package to help the people and economic sectors affected by the lockdown. Malaysia has seen a surge in new COVID-19 infections in recent weeks, with a record high of 8,219 reports, bringing the national total to 549,514. Another 61 deaths are reported, taking the death toll to 2,552. The country's healthcare system is under strain, with 72,823 active cases being treated, of which 808 are intensive care, and 403 of those are in need of assisted breathing. Infected. The Prime Minister announced it would be extended nationwide. Myanmar State TV show Su Chi at court the first picture since the coup. Myanmar State Television shows deposed leader Aung San Suu Chi in court in the first pictures of her to emerge since she was overthrown in February first coup. She sits next to ousted President Win Mint and another defendant as two police officers stand behind them. According to the assistance of Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group, Myanmar has been in chaos since the army took power with daily protests, marches and strikes nationwide against the junta. It has responded with lethal force, killing more than 800 people. In addition, Suu Kyi wishes people good health in her meeting with her lawyers and also make a reference to her National League for Democracy party that could be dissolved soon. Myanmar's junta appointed election commission will dissolve National League for Democracy party on the grounds that its victory in a November election was secured by fraud, quoting a commissioner. The accusations had been dismissed by the former electoral commission. The commissioner also threatened action against traitors involved. The head of lawyer team, Kin Maun Zhao, says the legal team also meet ousted president and co-defendant Win Mint to discuss the case against him. The lawyer says since Monday's hearing to allow defendants to meet with their lawyers, the presiding judge adjourned the session until June 7. Vietnam detects new COVID-19 variants from India and United Kingdom. Tại Việt Nam thì đã xuất hiện thêm biến chủng SARS-CoV-2 mới. The state media VTV reports authorities in Vietnam detect a new coronavirus variant that is a combination of the Indian and UK 19 variants and spreads quickly by air. The Southeast Asian country previously detected seven variants, B1222, B16119, D614G, B117, known as the UK variant, B1351, A231, and B16172, the Indian variant. Long says Vietnam published genome data of newly identified variant, which he said was more transmissible than previously known types. In addition, the World Health Organization identifies four variants of SARS-CoV-2 of global concern. These include variants that emerged first in India, Britain, South Africa, and Brazil. Officials at the WHO did not immediately respond to a request for commenting regarding the variant identified in Vietnam. Long says laboratory cultures of new variant shows the virus replicated itself very quickly, possibly explaining why so many new cases had appeared in different parts of the country in the short period of time. Meanwhile, the health ministry tells the meeting of the government is working to secure 10 million vaccine doses under the COVAX cost-sharing scheme, as well as a further 20 million doses of Pfizer vaccine and 40 million of Russia's Sputnik V. The country of about 98 million people has so far received 2.9 million doses and aims to secure 100 million this year.
và 39 mẫu dương tính với SARS-CoV-2. Trong đó thì Japan extends COVID-19 state of emergency for Tokyo and other regions until June 20. The local media reports the Japanese government extend COVID-19 emergency measures in place for Tokyo and eight other prefectures for an additional three weeks until June 20. The state of emergency currently in place for the nine prefectures has seen restrictions imposed on restaurants and bars, requiring them to close at 20 p.m. and refrain from serving alcohol while people are urged to work from home and refrain from crossing prefectural lines. Large spectator events have had the number of spectators capped to 5,000 people or 50% of venue's capacity. In Tokyo, movie theaters and department stores have also been requested to shutter operations. The extended restrictions will remain in place for Tokyo, Hokkaido, Aichi, Kyoto, Osaka, Hyogo, Okayama, Hiroshima and Fukuoka prefectures. In addition, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga is slated to explain the extensions and reasoning at a press conference after having consulted a panel of experts and formalized a decision as a task force. According to local media, Saitama, Chiba, Kanagawa, Gifu and Mie prefectures will also have quasi-emergency virus measures extended to June 20. Meanwhile, Gunma, Ishikawa and Kumamoto prefectures Quasi-emergency measures will be lifted on schedule on June 13. Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccine, including shoulders from the United States, will arrive in South Korea. South Korea says that 1 million doses of Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccines will arrive in early June, including for 550,000 soldiers, after the United States almost doubled its earlier pledge. In addition, the United States President Joe Biden, at his first summit with President Moon Jae-in earlier this month, promised to supply shots for 550,000 South Korean troops. The two agreed to forge a vaccine partnership to boost regional and global supplies. Director of Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, Jong Eun Kyung says that they plan to administer the vaccines on military-related personnel, including reserve forces and the Civil Defense Corps, after airlifting them directly from the United States using military planes. Global shortages and shipment delays have posed uncertainties in South Korea's vaccine rollout, deepening public skepticism over its goal of reaching herd immunity by November. South Korea's Food and Drug Safety Ministry granted final approval for the Johnson & Johnson's product in April after signing a deal to import the vaccine for 60 million people, though the date of their shipment has been not finalized. WHO approves China's Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. The World Health Organization approves the Coronavac COVID-19 vaccine developed by Chinese pharmaceutical company Sinovac Biotech for emergency use. According to a statement, WHO recommends the vaccine for use in people 18 years and older in a two-dose schedule with a spacing of two to four weeks. In addition, according to the WHO's strategic advisory group of experts on immunization, that the efficacy results show that the Sinovac vaccine prevented symptomatic disease in 51% of those vaccinated and prevent severe COVID-19 and hospitalization in 100% of the studied population. Maria Angela Simao, WHO Assistant Director General for Access to Medicines and Health Products, says that the world urgently needs a variety of COVID-19 vaccines to solve the problem of inequality in global vaccine distribution. The WHO urges coronavirus vaccine manufacturers to join the COVID-19 vaccine's global access, share their expertise and data, and contribute to the control of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Sinovac vaccine is the second one from China that has been included in WHO emergency use listing, following the Sinopharm vaccine, which was validated earlier last month. Apart from the two Chinese vaccines, the WHO has previously listed the COVID-19 vaccine developed by Pfizer-BioNTech to versions of AstraZeneca, Oxford vaccine, the Janssen vaccine and the Moderna vaccine for emergency use. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy and enjoy your weekend.